Welcome, my name is Sylvia Hicking and I'm working for many years in the applied technology for industrial wood coatings. Today I like to show you some of our deaerators and deformers for waterborne coatings. When we are dealing with coatings, we know there might be no moment without the risk to create foam. We have very, very foamy ingredients. We have production, application, porous substrate, and last but not least, reaction gas due to two-pack formulation. All this foam leads in a lot of problems. We have the loss of weather resistance. No? Microfoam is a door opener for water and will destroy wood. And it might be a waste of time and money when a parquet coating looks like the picture in the middle. And also in industrial or metal coatings, we have the loss of mechanical properties by bending, for instance, and we lost corrosion protection. And that's why we need deformers and deaerators to get rid of macro and microfoam. As a short reminder, the working mechanism of deformers like Foamex and iRays. We have the well-distributed blue deformer droplets. They are all in the coating. They are also in the double lamellar. When they are in the double lamellar, they start to spread and can destabilize the double lamellar. And finally, the double lamellar breaks and we have this picture. Deaerators like Irex and Iris are acting a little bit different. Please look on the video and you will see it immediately. In the beginning, the blank has a lot of big, small, medium-sized bubbles. And with Deaerator, we have from the beginning on less bubbles and very small. And while the applied coating is drying, you see the small bubbles are shrinking more and more and will be diluted in the system. This is a physical process and behind this process is the Laplace pressure. This Laplace pressure means that the inside pressure is really, really high when the bubble is very small and therefore the dissolution is quicker. So the deaerator supports the building of less microfoam and the building of little bubbles with high internal pressure. Beside Fomex, Erex and Iris, we have also the surfinals, so-called molecular deformers. They are basing on organic geminized technology. They are silicon-free and are containing no solid particles. These are active against micro and macrofoam depending on the formulation. Deforming or deaerating with molecular deformers is a little bit different. Molecular deformers are surfactants which have a deforming character. They are very, very compatible. They will not creating surface defects like fish eyes or craters. And they are so active that they are continuously displacing surfactants from microfoam bubbles or also surfactants in the double, double lamella that the double lamella can break. But please keep in mind, molecular deformers are really, really compatible deformers but they are not that strong as silicon-based products. They are ideal combination partners. In the coatings industry, we are mainly dealing with mineral oils, organomodified polysiloxanes, vegetable oils, molecular deformers or silicon-free deformers for the different market segment. We, with our Fomex, Airways and Irex products, are mainly working with organomodified polysiloxanes. Here we have different supply forms like concentrates, 
filled or not filled, emulsions and solutions. Before I'm coming to single products, I like to give you some helpful advices. Often the best results are achieved with combinations of deformers and deorators. Add the more incompatible, the more stronger deformer or deorator in the mill base, when you have a mill base, or at the highest points of viscosity. The more compatible one you can add to the letdown. Concentrates, if possible, to the grind stage. Concentrates need higher shear forces, we will see later. Emulsions, please, to the letdown. Emulsions are easier to incorporate and some emulsions are not that shear stable to regard these high shear forces while grinding. Please, when you have two deformers, the incompatible one, the more hydrophobic one, with higher shear forces. When you are dealing with concentrates, 100% products, it's also possible to dilute them in a proper co-solvent or in a substrate wetting agent which is often present in the formulation. Now I like to show you the short video of the difference between emulsion and concentrate. It's only a simple video, but I think it's very impressive. On the one side we are adding an emulsion and on the other side we are adding a concentrate and we have only low shear forces. What you see is that the concentrate will be stay in a pearl shape. The emulsion will be diluted and well distributed in the water. And this is the indication for high shear forces when you are using concentrates. Lower shear forces are possible when you are working with emulsions. I'm pretty sure you are now curious on products. And I know that you know that we have a lot of products, some for only specific application. And therefore, I like to show you now some products which are very universal and independent of industries. On this slide, you see the products and afterwards, I will give you some key figures and results. Before I start with the single products, I like to explain you this slide, the product card, let me say it in this way. You see on the right side some specifications like active matter, chemical base, regulatories and alternatives regarding higher efficiency or higher compatibility. In the bottom you see different applications and so longer the purple bar so higher the suitability. Now I would start with Fomex 810. It's the most universal deformer concentrate which we have in our portfolio. It's our first recommendation for the mill base. It's very universal, it's working nearly all market segments, but very seldom with concentrates, it's also suitable for letdown and clears, and it's effective also against microfoam problems. It's a nice combination partner with more compatible deformers, and as a concentrate, it's also suitable to pre-dilute it for an easier incorporation. And when you look on the applications, it always has digits between 3 and 5, so it's really, really universal. In addition, some results. What do you see here? We have a middle base with different concentrates and afterwards we make a letdown 
with an acrylic dispersion. And you see Fomex A10, best performer in deforming effect, purple bar, and also in compatibility, gray bar. But, as I mentioned, you can also use it in more sensitive coatings. Here we have a Barclay coating based on a PU dispersion. Best efficiency and acceptable compatibility. Other emulsions are not that effective in this case. With Fomex A25 we have the classical deformer emulsions for waterborne formulations. It's also basing on a polyether siloxane copolymer with an active matter of 20%. An ideal combination partner with Fomex A10. I mentioned it before. It has a nice storage stability, a good foam breakdown, it's suitable for different applications and all market segment, maybe except flexo and gravure printing, you see it in the bottom, and it's suitable for letdown and clears. Here I want to show you results in the parquet coating. Uh, I wrote uncountable possibilities because A25 is belonging to a family, A22, A23 and A25. A25 is the most efficient one with nice compatibility, but when you need higher compatibility, it's better to move to A22. The next one, Formex 1488. 1488 is one of the first deforma emulsions we ever had in our portfolio. It's a true letdown deformer. It's easy to incorporate and it has a high protection against foam during the application. It's preferred recommended for brush or roller application. Therefore, we are now talking more about architectural coatings. And here we are recommending it from low to medium PVC formulations. But as you see at the bottom, you can use it also in conventional spray. Very nicely it's working in flexo and gravure, but in sensitive coatings like dip, flow and curtain coating, it's really a winner product. On the right side, again, you see the specification and regulatories and alternatives. One result basing on a medium PVC formulation from architectural coatings. We have a vinyl acetate dispersion and it's pigmented um, and we add different deformers, emulsion and concentrates. And you see best performer Fomex 1488 with regard on efficiency and also compatibility. Last product of the deformer types is Formex 844, one of printing ink's favorites. It's a concentrate and it's silica free, that's very important. The strongest performance it has in flexo and gravure printing, you see in the bottom, but from own experience, I also know that it's possible to use it in airless and airmix application because it's nicely effective in eliminating microfoam. Why printing inks are loving this product is the suitability for food contact. This is very seldom in our portfolio. Here, one result from printing inks. You see different deformers, all are suitable for food contact. The purple ones are silicon free, the gray ones are iris and Fomex products. You see iris, very, very compatible, but not that efficient compared to the winner Fomex 844. Here are 
some additional information regarding the suitable in different food contact inventories. Now we are moving from microfoam to microfoam. I'm pretty sure you know the most strongest product we have in our portfolio is IREX 901W. You see it right below. But the most universal product is IREX 902W. Highly suitable for errors and airmic application, but and that's different to 901, also suitable for spray, brush, roller. It gives an excellent combination for micro and macroform elimination, depending on the formulation and on the viscosity. This efficiency is combined with a high level of compatibility. You can use it in clears and pigmented systems, also in waterborne UV. It's the most universal deformer on deaerator emulsion for waterborne formulations. You see it below. Why it's so universal? Why it's so highly recommended against macro microfoam? because it's the best compromise between deforming and compatibility. Here we have a spray-applied waterborne PU coating. And you see other products like Formex A10 might be stronger, but they are failing in compatibility. IREX 902W shows the best balance. And it's independent from market segment. Here we have a waterborne industrial coating based on a modified acrylic dispersion. You see on the left side, with a look due to the light box, the blank, and you see a lot of microfoam incorporating Tego IREX 902W. You really see less microfoam bubbles after drying. And keep in mind, this is a lab test. Afterwards, in the practical test, it will be again the winner. Within our new portfolio, we have an additional possibility to eliminate microfoam. This is iRACE 8070. It's a 100% product based on polyisa modified siloxane. But, and this is a special issue of this product, it's silica-free. So it's more compatible compared to 901W, for instance. And the efficiency is in the middle between 901W and IREX 902W, the emulsion. Due to its high compatibility, and the support of flow and leveling, it's mainly used in OEM coatings and in car refinish. But as you see at the bottom, it's also suitable for other applications in different markets. Here you see results from a classical airless applied furniture coating based on an acrylic dispersion. On the left side, the blank sample after drying under the microscope, and on the right side, including IRIS 8070, the dried surface under the microscope. I mentioned that it's highly suitable for sensitive coatings like OAM and car refinish, because it's not only active against microfoam, it's also supporting flow and leveling. You see on the picture the difference between a competitor product and IRS 8070. You see the reflection of the lights from the wall. And also the measurement of the D 
DOE values. Nice leveling, nice mirror-like surface. The last deformers I want to introduce to you are two surfinal products. In this case, MD20. MD20 belongs to the organic molecular deformers based on Gemini surfactant technology. It's silicon and solvent free. One benefit by using molecular deformers like surfinal MD20 is the good reduction of dynamic surface tension. Therefore, we preferred to recommend them for dynamic application processes like flexo and gravure printing. They combine defect-free foam control and additional good substrate wetting. In low viscous formulation, they are able to eliminate microfoam and they can improve flow and leveling. They are really easy to incorporate and give no compatibility problems. In the beginning, when I explained molecular deformers, I mentioned that they mainly used as combination partners, but sometimes they are good enough to use it as single deformers. Here I have two examples. The purple one, a joinery coating, the blue one, a parquet coating. The gray line shows the volume height of foam. And you see, we have a nice foam reduction, but in addition, we can increase the compatibility. Both coatings, including the surfinal MD20, showed better surface appearance compared to the blank sample. But mainly molecular deformers like MD20 are ideal combination partners. In this case, it was customer formulation based on an acrylic dispersion for curtain coater application. We only have sufficient deforming by using Formex A25, but unfortunately we have craters. We combined with a surfactant, but surface appearance was not good enough and deforming starts to get worse. Then we had the idea to combine Formex A25 on a lower dosage with a little bit of MD20 and a surfactant to achieve the best performance. And this is what you see on the right picture. No foam, no craters by a combination of silicon-based deformer and molecular deformer. Coming to the last product of my presentation, the Surfinal AD01. Again, a Gemini-based molecular deformer. A real deformer for multi-purpose, showing excellent dynamic wetting, so very suitable alone or as combination partner for dynamic processes. But multi-purpose means also it can improve film coalescence and allow to reduce the co-solvent in a formulation, which is very important in time of reducing VOC. Here I have an example. We have a trim paint applied in the middle without coalescence and you see the cracking under hard drying conditions at 1.7 degrees Celsius. On the right side, you see the addition of 6% of a coalescencing solvent. In this case, it's texanol, but still we have cracks. On the left side, you see the picture where we add a mixture from surfinal AD01 with less texanol and we have a nice film formation. To have this film formation, we have to use 
8% taxanol when we would use it alone. And this might be a nice opportunity for this product, as I mentioned, in times of VUC reduction. Now I'm at the end of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed listening. I like to thank you for listening. Whenever you have questions, please contact us directly in the Applied Technology Department or check on our website. There might be a lot more information I could give you in this short half hour. Bye-bye.